Hi, this is Barry. Welcome to the demo of the Cisco Secure Malware Analytics, what's used to be called ThreatGrid. And let me jump directly into a demo. So we will land on the dashboard and the dashboard will give us a overview of all the samples that's being analyzed and uh, in the past by default 30 days, but we can change the timeline to you know, 24 hours or seven days. And by default, it's showing us all the submissions in from the organization. Besides some basic data, we also see recent samples that's being submitted. And when we hover on them, we can see a video um, of that sample, threat scores, as well as um, submissions uh, by status. And so this shows us uh, how many are complete and uh, how many of them were not supported, which we might need to take a, a deeper look into in the future. Also down below, we can see that there are submission sources, which in this case were submission from users, but also ThreatGrid could take submissions from um, other products like AMP, as well as Meraki and other sources as well. And it shows us it also breaks down into how many submissions per, per day and uh, what's the status and mostly were completed. And there were some same thing in type were not uh, supported. And down below, we can see uh, the environments that is involved uh, for the submissions. And most of them, as we can see, were Windows 10. And it shows uh, how many of them were convicted, some Windows 7. And also we can see submission file types and looks like majority of the file types are URL. And there's also executables, PDF and, and others. They give us a really good overview and breakdown of um, the file types that were submitted. Also, let's scroll down to IP address. So IP address could be the, the IP of the host or the IP of the, that's uh, embedded in the malware that probably the malware was trying to um, gain access to. Uh, it could be a command and control. So those IP addresses are uh, listed here. We can have a, a different views of the IP, like domains, uh, top domains that's involved as well, as well as can give you a cloud put of, you know, uh, the which one's more accessed and all that. And also give us a breakdown of the behavioral indicators. So, which is, a really good information uh, when you need to look at what anomalies are involved. Okay, so if so, this is a run, quick rundown of the dashboard itself. And as you can notice, uh, and I mentioned that we're, we see the um, submissions from all our organization. But just want to know that uh, ThreadGrid is actually user based. So, you know, license is user, user based license. And each user can actually, um, you know, have their own view of the uh, the samples that they submitted. So, like, if I click on my samples, I can I can see all the samples that I submitted. And also here, you can um, make sure that you th these are the ones that you, you know, as the user has access to. And let's look at, uh, for example, um, look at some samples, right? Uh, just to give you a better idea. For example, let's look at the, the critical threats. And as you can see that the, in the last 30 days, um, the critical threats are listed here. This one looked interesting. <laughs> it looked bad just by its name. And what we can, if you wanna look into the details, we can just click on the arrow here. And that's going to show us all the details about this thread, this file. So first of all, we see the SHA-256 SHA and SHA-1 MD5. And over here, we can see the pivot uh, menu that we can see basically in all the uh, Cisco security products. And this gives us uh, some options to do with this malicious file. We can do some investigation and uh, create judgment, and we can also go to AMP for endpoints to look at the file trajectory and uh, uh, search for it. And we can also uh, work with Kikamon, or we can use utilize the SecureX orchestrator to block or take forensic snapshots and some other orchestration enabled actions. As well as uh, we can work with Umbrella, and we can try to look at this sample over there and see what domains and all that that's related uh, and seeing there. And we can also do add to a case, which is this adds to our case book. And so you can see a case was created 
for this middleware. And we can also look at uh, our casebook here that that this tool actually follows us uh, when we go into all different uh, Cisco security products and it carries the uh, context with us. When, once we switch from, say, uh, ThreadGrid to uh, other product like AMP, you know, we can still see um, the same context displayed and carry it over, so, which is very useful. It also shows us the behaviorals, the uh, uh, indicators that we see that's related to this malware. Oh, another thing I want to quickly mention is the access to this. It, right now it's public, but we can lock it so that only we, and, you know, I have access to this sample. And uh, some other details like how many network streams and uh, registries, artifacts and environment. So if we want to look into further detail about this, we can click on the file name and that gives us the full report uh, of this file. So same thing, the, the metadata of, of this file and uh, how it was analyzed when it started and when it ended. It took six minutes and 28 seconds for it to be analyzed, not, uh, analyzed by ThreatGrid. And the uh, same thing, the, the file where it was seen and um, you know, the SHA value, as well as all the detailed information like uh, the behavioral indicators that we saw with far more details over here as well as um, the TCP IP streams. This is where the malware had initiated connections out there, whether it's TCP, UDP, where it was trying to access. And the process is that that's involved with this piece of file that uh, could have been like a, like a dropper that, that, that was used and, you know, part of the script that, 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 that tried to drop some files and the artifacts that's involved. Um, so these are the, 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 the full list of artifacts that's involved. And uh, we could see like uh, what files are related to this and uh, uh, whether it's in memory or it could be like on disk and um, uh, what process was, uh, was uh, most relevant and all those uh, detail information. And we can also see all the registry that this, uh, this malware had tried to touch. And as you can see, it's accessing the, the run. So it tried to modify and probably try to inject itself there. So which is definitely malicious. And we can also look at the, the keys that's created and modified and deleted and all that. And we can see all the file activity, right? So what file it read, modified and created. So this is a really good overview um, of all the things that's related to this to this uh, file. But we can also see what's very helpful is the uh, process timelines that's re involved, and you know, we can filter by network streams. Which if if we don't want to see that, we can uncheck and uh, that or um, like file activities and leaving the things that we are interested in. Like when you hover on the uh, on each of the, these dots, uh, you can see what uh, timestamp it was and what activity it was. Uh, so as you can see here, it was allocating memory. So this is uh, a really good overview of the, the threat uh, when, when it comes to uh, what it did over time. and. The next one is really useful. Uh, with, so th this gives us correlates uh, the file and um, you know all the other files that it tries to act, act uh, interact with. So it shows us like the the the, the relationship between the uh, processes, and uh, we can also match this to the MITRE attack matrix, where we we could use as a reference as well as well as the video, the runtime video that we had uh, seen on the dashboard. And what we can also do with the file is that we can request to download the sample uh, if we want to run it like in our own sandbox. Or, but the, the sample will be password protected, uh, zip. So uh, with a password of infected. So basically use it with, your, uh, with caution, right? So, and we can see the, uh, export the whole report uh, to an HTML file. And we can get the JSON of the analysis as well, uh, probably use it on another software uh, for analysis. And we can get the whole PCAP of the traffic that the, that the malicious file had initiated. 
And the process is, you know, JSON, basically a list of all the processes and uh, runtime video, which is this guy and the timeline JSON. So basically timelines and all that. So this is the, the, the download of it. And I just want to quickly show you the casebook again. As you can see that we just clicked a button and um, this was created and we can modify the title to make it more relevant. Uh, the owner, who it is, and uh, write a summary and observations. And we can also investigate this further in uh, threat response, which um, can help us correlate and, you know, do the th threat hunting and correlate this file into our environment and see, you know, where it was seen in our environment and look at um, if there are like domains, IP addresses that's related and draw us the whole map of, um, you know, how, how this malware um, had exposure in our uh, in our system. So yeah, so so this uh, concludes our demo and hope you find it helpful. Thank you.